Welcome to the FlowerSchool.com video library. I'm Leanne Kessler, director of the Floral Design Institute, and today I'm here to share with you our latest segment on a corsage for homecoming. The season has begun and corsages are in demand. And more and more we're evolving to where corsages is an expanded term that can be hair pieces, necklaces, bracelets, anything that can be worn or even just carried. Some of the promers and homecoming people are carrying bouquets. But most popular of all is still the traditional wrist corsage. With the increasing demand for creative flowers for homecoming, we're so fortunate that the mechanics have gotten easier and easier. To create this corsage, you just need two Gerber daisies, nice and simple, a bit of coordinating ribbon, a few leaves. I'm using magnolia and Galix, and then I'm going to use the slap it style of bracelet because it opens out nicely to work and then it fits easily on the wrist. Then just one piece of wire, yeah, that's it. Just one piece of wire and your Oasis floral adhesive. First step is to make your bow. And I just take the ribbon and I figure eight it. And then I twist and loop, twist and loop. So I don't worry about having a center. Just twist and loop. And then cut it. And then using your one piece of wire, secure that together. And then so that I don't forget later, I take a moment and dovetail the ends by folding them in half and cutting into the pleat. Then I don't need all this wire. I just needed it to secure everything in place so that the bow doesn't fall apart. So now I'll take and cut off the ends of the wire, pressing it flat so it doesn't poke anyone. Then using the Oasis floral adhesive, a small amount on the bow itself, and then a small amount on the little tab then let them set. Blow on them a bit. And when they are dry, adhering the two together. How do you know when it's dry enough to do that? It's when the glue just starts to bubble. Then it's ready to stick. To work on the wristlet, I find it easiest to just take a towel, a hand towel, and roll it into a ball. And then I can set the bracelet right onto that and work easily without having to use one hand to hold it. First step is going to be some leaves. I don't need any stem, so I just cut that off. Maybe just a single Gaelic sleeve. And then the magnolia I love for the color but it's a little bit large. So to cut it down, you cut from the bottom. Never ever cut from the top. Just give it a cut like so. Then I can use this tip and it'll be beautiful tucked in without being too big. Maybe another little tip. Then using the Oasis Floral Adhesive, just a bit of glue right on the leaf. Let it begin to set. And then I just lift and slide it in. It'll stick to the band as well as the ribbon. Bring another leaf, just a little bit of glue. Let it begin to set. And then again, sliding it in between the loops of the ribbon so it hides that cut edge. Just gives a little glimmer of that beautiful butterscotch color. Maybe one more piece. I'm not going to worry about that cut edge showing because we'll be covering it up with flowers later. I'm going to take one more, adding just a little more glue, and bringing it in with the Galix so I cover some of the green so it's not quite so harshly different. For flowers, the beautiful Gerber daisy. 
I'm going to remove it from the stem. Don't need it at all. Got one petal there sticking out, just remove it. And then on the second one, also removing it from the stem. But using two Gerber daisies could end up looking like eyeballs, be a little bit heavy. So rather than using two, I'm going to use one and a half. How do you use half a Gerber daisy? Just remove half the petals. This is a great way to also use one if it's slightly damaged. Maybe it's got one side of petals that don't look perfect. Then just go through and pluck them out. So you have one and a half. And you go back, starting with the big one first, add a little bit of glue right onto the base. Once again, let it begin to dry. And then it's going to nestle right down into the center. Holding it until it's secure. And then taking a little glue on the back of the second. And this one terraces right over the top of the first. And you're just separating some of the petals and sliding it right into place so that they overlap, creating a little bit of depth to the corsage. Once dry, I always take the corsage and put it on to make sure it feels comfortable, stable, and it looks good on the wrist. Then for homecoming, I like to add a little touch of whimsy. And right now, butterflies are so popular. Just taking a single butterfly, adding a little bit of glue to the back. Again, letting it set. And then let him alight right on the flowers. It's sure to bring a smile to everybody's face. With the convenience of glue, the mechanics of the corsages now are so easy. It makes it a joy to make these. But now, teacher Leanne speaking, don't forget when you work with your Oasis cold glue, when you're done, always take a bit of Vaseline and put it around the tip of the tube and then put the top back on. That way, you'll get it back off each time and it doesn't glue itself shut. For more creative inspiration and, of course, education, check out our website at flowerschool.com. If you've got questions, you can contact us through the website or by telephone at 1-800-819-8089. If email is easier, use my personal email. It's Leanne, L-E-A-N-N-E, -N -N -E, at floraldesigninstitute.com. Now it's your turn. How many home climbing corsages are you going to make this year? Be sure you have fun while you do it and do something you love.